Hi everybody, I'm George Runkle, President of Runkle Consulting Incorporated. And what I'm going to talk about today is some tips for uh, architects and other designers as far as building ship and container buildings to help keep your costs down as far as the structure is concerned. And over here on this side is my loyal assistant Dewey. He likes watching me draw and he's all into this very much. So he'll be part of our presentation. He may speak up periodically. All right, so let's talk. Let's get right into talking about it. First thing, shipping containers. These are your basic shipping containers. You can make the most basic building you want, which is easy and cheap. Stack containers right one on top of another. Nice thing about this is everything carries down. All your loads are carrying down just as the containers are designed right down here right through the corners, right down to the corner casting. Very simple. You leave a lot of the sides in place. This contain Each container acts as a really deep beam. It carries that load very easy. Now, the problem is we build this and, okay, here's our building. Are you happy? How do you think people in your neighborhood are going to feel when they see this going up? Or, oh, okay, well, maybe we'll put another container here. How's that look? It looks like a stack of boxes. That ain't going to go too well. So you want to break it up. The architects are definitely going to have to come up with something to make this look nicer. So what do we do? Well, one thing that's done very commonly is doing a cantilever. The cantilevers aren't much of a problem except for, let's see if I can explain this pretty well with these models. I think I can. I've got to make a special connection here. And I've got to make a special connection in here. Done it. It's not a problem, but it adds to the cost, okay? It's not free. It's fabrication. When I put these containers and stack them the way they're supposed to, you can buy commercially available connections that lock the containers together and make stacking very quick and easy. You're not going to get that if you cantilever them. Next thing you don't want to do certain things that are very important in the container structure. You've got your bottom rail. This is your top rail. This is the rear of the container, oddly enough, where the doors are because when it's on a truck, it's going in this direction. This is the front of the container. You cannot cut the corner pieces, the top rail, the bottom rail, without destroying the integrity of the structure of the container. You can do this, you can do anything you want, but it's going to cost you a lot of money and we've just destroyed the container as a structure. We're just going to be using it as a veneer, which kind of ruins the whole idea of containers for a building. Containers themselves are inherently very strong. You want to preserve that strength. So doing that kind of modifications really makes a mess. Other thing that's difficult it's when we start turning them in different ways. And I got a job coming up where I'm going to have exactly that. I can engineer it. Any engineer that knows this stuff can engineer it, but it's a lot of retrofitting because we're not carrying the loads to the corners directly. I got to carry the load along these top rails and get it to the corners. And if we're cutting out this corrugation in any way, I'm going to have to do a lot of stiffening. Next thing, we open up the sides. This is a very deep beam, as I said before. These sides are critical for reinforcing the container. But who wants to live in an eight foot wide box? I don't. So we do it is we put them together and we cut out little bits of the sides so we can widen it up. We can take out the whole side and that's not a big problem as long as you let me put in two columns. Somewhere in here, I need two columns. Two columns. I know you might want the whole side open and this a whole opening, but this is a 40 foot span from here to here. I can't make it work. Not without some. The laws of physics just jump in. This is one. If you take out the whole side, this is one I have to say, I can't do it. Not and be no, I can't, unless I put some sort of truss on top or something really heavy beam. It just wouldn't work, though. It wouldn't make sense. So you've got to give me two columns. 
Okay, now if we leave pieces of this corrugation in, we can might be able to make it work without reinforcing, but I don't know that unless I've had a chance to run it through the computer and do an analysis. Don't give me a call and ask me how much you can cut out of the side of the container. For one thing, that's engineering. That's what I do for a living. I don't tell people that for free. The other thing is, I got to do calculations. There's no rule of thumb, except for one. One rule of thumb, you can cut about 10 feet out of a container somewhere around in the middle without it causing a problem. You get over to the sides, it causes a problem. If you stay towards the middle, generally you're okay, but not in every case. Okay, I hope that clarifies things for you architects and designers out there and builders. And I'm happy you joined me here. And I'm happy that the parrot didn't.